Hi everybody, Chris Bryant here. Thanks for joining me for a brand new series of CCNA 200-125 video practice exams. And in case you haven't taken one of these before, let me quickly go over the format with you. I'm going to show you a typical practice exam question right here on the screen, several of them actually. And we'll take a look at the choices. You'll have a few seconds to give your answer. In, anytime you want to pause the video course and take a little extra time, you certainly can. Then we'll go back over the questions, uh, identify which statements are true and false when that is applicable, and we'll also use a Cisco router to back up our answers. So let's go ahead and dig into question one here. First off, identify the OSI layer at which each of these common network devices operate. We've got a router, a switch, a crossover cable, a rollover cable, and a bridge. Now with question two, which of these five statements, and again, let's choose all that apply, which of these accurately describes the layer of the OSI model that is typically referred to as layer four? Kind of a fancy way of putting it there, but I like, I like to make it wordy because Cisco does that sometimes too, of course. And let's look at our choices that TCP and UDP operate here that data takes the form of packets here, that this layer offers both connection-oriented and connectionless data transfer methods, that MAC addresses are used to forward traffic at this layer, and that routing occurs at this layer. Which of those statements are true? Question three, which of these are found at layer two of the OSI model? MAC, burned in, IP, and physical addresses are your choices. And we're going to step out of the OSI model here and head up to OSPF. Which of these statements are true? That every area has to have a physical or logical connection to area zero. The router OSPF command uses AS numbers. That the value specified with router OSPF, the command, is locally significant only and does not affect adjacencies. And then finally, D, that the default OSPF interface priority is zero. Let's go over these answers, and with question one here, our router runs at layer three, it runs at our network layer. Switch, uh, switch runs at the data link layer, that's layer two. The cables, both crossover and rollover, are gonna be physical. They're gonna be running at layer one. And then finally, the bridge, you don't see those too often anymore, but we still need to know a little bit about them, and one good thing to know about them is that they do indeed run at layer two. So top to bottom there, our layers are three, two, one, one, two. As far as these statements describing layer four, A definitely does because layer four is our transport layer. It's right in the middle of the OSI model and that is where TCP and UDP operate. Now statement B, data takes the form of packets here, that is false because packets are found at layer three where with layer four, they're a little bit bigger, they're data segments. Now, as far as the connection-oriented and connectionless data transfer methods, that is TCP and UDP, right? That's describing those pretty well, connection-oriented being TCP, connectionless being UDP. So C is true. Pardon me. Both D and E are false. We're not using MAC addresses to forward traffic at layer 4. And that routing occurs here, that's definitely false. That is definitely layer 3. So our true statements here were A and C, and that's it. So let's go ahead and take a look at question three here. Which of the following are found at layer two? MAC, burned in, and physical addresses. How can we have three address types at one layer? Because they're all the same thing. BIAs, and let me show you where to find that on a Cisco router. Uh, let's see, let's go on the interface here. And here I've got show interface fast ethernet zero, zero. And you can see in the second line, it says address is, and here's the MAC address of the interface. And right after that is the burned in address. And you might think, well, why do I have the MAC address here and then the BIA here when they're the same thing? Thing is, we do have the power to go in and change this MAC address on this interface. So we would change it logically, but physically, the burned in address would stay the same. So that's, how, that's where the burned in address can be found. And again, it's just another name for a MAC address. And let me tell you, it is very rare that you would go into an interface like that and change a MAC address. It's pretty darn rare. But again, MAC address, burned in address, physical address, 
all the same thing and all three of them run at layer two. We call them physical addresses, by the way, because they physically exist on the interface, not because they run at the physical layer, because they don't. IP addresses, as you know, run at layer three. Now, as far as these statements regarding OSPF, all, all areas must have a physical or logical connection to area zero, that's true. Your, back, your backbone area, which is area zero, and then you have all your non-backbone areas, they've got to contain a router. They've got to be part of a router that also has a physical interface in area zero, or we have to build what we call a virtual link, a logical connection to area zero. But you can't have an area off by itself, a non-backbone area that doesn't have any kind of connection to area zero. As far as the router OSPF command goes, I believe I had this up on the board as well. Let's go down here. You can see that iOS help tells us that this is a process ID. It is not advertised to potential neighbors and it doesn't have anything to do with adjacencies. So statement B is false because what, what does use AS numbers? Where do those come in? They come in two different places actually now in your CCNA studies. They come in with EIGRP and also BGP uses autonomous system numbers. So again, with router OSPF, that uses process ID, so B is false. C is true, because the value specified with router OSPF that we just looked at is locally significant only, that's easy for me to say, and does not affect adjacencies. Finally, that default interface priority, let's have a look at this one. This is show IP OSPF interface fast O, and I'll bring that up, because I had this enabled to show you the priority and your interface priority you've got all kinds of great info up here about what area that interface is in the process ID you're running the RID and everything else but what we're looking here for is priority and this is the default it is one not zero it's an important value especially when you're running an NBMA network in OSPF and we will talk about that another time. A lot of times, as far as broadcast segments go, you just leave the priority at one and everything's fine. It's not a value that we pay a lot of attention to, but we better do so for our CCNA exam studies. Speaking of that, I hope you found this video practice exam useful. We're going to have a lot more of them here uh, several times a week, actually, as we progress into 2018. And also, we've got a couple of other video types. Our five-minute video boot camps are coming back and a new feature called two and a half minutes with and that's a great study tool as well and you can't beat the cost because they're all free out here on youtube i'm chris bryant thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow with another ccna video practice exam